beautifuls, this is Arami here, and welcome back to Seduce Me 2. We were messing around with the shadows and learned that Damien is like getting his energy back and everything. Everyone's in training. So, here we are with Shadow. I'm surprised she managed to stay there for as long as she did. I expected her to phase out before we came here. To do what, exactly? Shadow stared at Diana blankly before turning toward the door and walking out. Come. We have more work to do, human. The irritated look on Diana's face looked semi-hilarious, but I shook my head and ran after Shadow, pumped to learn more. How did I do all of that? Curious, are you? Well, yeah, I am your student after all. I want to know. As we walked back to the library, Shadow looked to me and gave me a slight smirk. You are quite interesting for a human. You're not falling in love with me, right? <laughs> I felt a bit flattered and ran my hand back behind my neck. Bearing a shy smile. I had to admit, I was acting like a little girl who had just learned about candy. <laughs> Still, I had a very good reason. I did something I never imagined I could do. It was well worth the excitement. Shadow shook his head and let out a sigh. While it is impossible for us to touch anyone in the Shadow Plane, let alone assassinate them, it is very possible to distract them or affect the light sources of the world. Like how I did? Indeed. A Shadow is more than just a reaction to light. It is also a part of a person's being, able to be used to, let's just say, get a message across. Hmm. So I can't kill anyone from the shadow plane. No, but you can very easily make them feel as if they aren't alone, putting them on alert and giving you a good chance to kill them while they're distracted. All right. I took a moment to take in what he meant. I could have, I could see how manipulating the shadows were a great benefit in battle. However, apparently I had a time limit for how long I could be in the shadows. At least it wasn't entirely overpowered. The remainder of the day became focused on me manipulating light and shadow in the library. While being in the shadow plane was fun, it was only effective if the targets of my movements were either sources of light or had distinct shadows of their own. At the end of the day, I was exhausted. Who knew that using dark magic would be so difficult? Still, I guess that I had a poten had I had potential, or else I wouldn't have succeeded in passing the test. Shadow threw at me. I had to be proud of, of that much. I slumped and fell onto the ground, exhausted. I definitely used up a lot of energy, and it was a foreign feeling to me as a human. It was like my body became heavier with each breath, breath I took, but it wasn't entirely painful. A small huff caused me to look over at Shadow, seeing him stare at me intensely with crossed arms. What? For a human, you have a large amount of energy. I'm surprised you're not a witch. I felt a little bol <laughs> bolstered by the statement, despite how strangely it was phrased. I guess Shadow really couldn't genuinely compliment anyone. I wondered why. I had much to learn, but was excited for the next day as my training ended and I was sent to my room. I channeled my energy toward the hall, wanting so much to go back to the room, flop onto the bed, and sleep. However, something in my gut stopped me from moving as I approached my bedroom door. Huh? Something felt wrong, whether it was something in the air or my natural instinct screaming at me. Something was throwing me off, and I couldn't pin down why. As the pain groan escaped, my th escaped the room, my suspicions were confirmed. I peeked into the bedroom to see Damien curled up in bed, gripping his head and pressing his knees onto his chest. <sighs> Hello? Damien? I rushed over and knelt by the bed, now insanely worried what was happening with him. As I got close, however, Damien jutted his hand out, facing his palm to me in a tense position. Stop! Don't! I froze in place. His face was contorted to one of extreme pain, gritting his teeth and crushing his eyebrows together in a tight expression of agony. I couldn't tell what was going on, but whatever it was, it was torturing him. Damien violently shook his head, digging his fingers further into his head. Please! Just stop! Stop doing anything or try to help? Let, uh, let's just stop. He's telling us to stop. I let, out, I let every part of my body become still. My thoughts, my limbs, everything apart from breathing and blinking. If Damien was hearing thoughts again, then he was probably getting bombarded with a castle's worth of them. And I needed to make sure I wasn't adding to the pressure. Damien opened an eye to me, glazed over in tears, and smiled ever so slightly, knowing exactly what I was doing. Thank you. Whoa, my poor baby! Like, oh my gosh! I let out my emotions rumble in my chest as I nodded with a smile. I understood him perfectly. After all, I was going to be his wife. However, a full minute passed and nothing had changed. I began to instinctively worry, but I forced the feeling into my chest and continued to let my head 
remained empty of thought. Damon attempted to take deep breaths, trying to calm down further, but no, to no avail. <coughs> I became even more worried than before. What was I supposed to do? <laughs> the sound of Diana's voice echoed through the room, forcing me to turn around and look at her as she stood in the doorway. She stared hard at Damien, holding a hand out to him. Her fingers and palm began to glow a dark purple color, like a flame dancing over his skin. Hello? Damien slowly rolled onto his knees and his knees on the bed, still gripped, gripping his head and growling to himself as Diana slowly approached him, holding her hand close to his forward tilting head. Liberamente tua! The flames around Diana's hand sparked, intensifying in its glow. As Damien winced and hissed that, out from a sting of pain, I continued to remain still, not wanting to add the pressure in Damien's head, but confused as to what Diana was doing. Very slowly, Damien's head began to glow the same purple color before a stream of purple energy began to trickle from him towards Diana's hand. As it connected, the energy around Damien's head began to fade at last, and Damien's tense form began to relax. Diana tensed tensed her hands and caused the flame around her skin to warp around itself, forming an orb above her palm as she turned it towards her. As it settled into a physical purple ball, she grasped it and let it shatter in her hand. Glass and blood began to trickle from her closed grip as Damien finally released a breath of air, slamming his hands down on the mattress beneath him and curling for himself further over his knees. Damien? I instinctively reached over and placed my hand on his arm, feeling the cold sweat run down from down them from the struggle he was fighting against earlier. He was paler than before, but his face slowly melted into an expression of calm relief. I looked back at Diana, seeing her lift her hand to her mouth and lick, and lick over her new wounds. Blood trickled down her arm, but she managed to catch most of it with her tongue, unfazed by Damon's sudden re relaxation or my stare. What did you do? Diana kept her focus on her arm and hand as she replied, I did something that his brothers should have done a long time ago. Placed a barrier on his mind. What? I furrowed my eyebrows in confusion, not understanding what she meant. As Diana finally looked back at me, she let out a sigh at my expression. He can read minds, but he can't control it. However, imagine putting a bubble around his thoughts. He wouldn't be able to hear anything but his own. This is precisely what I have done. Then, what was the energy you pulled from him? That was something that shouldn't have been there. It's nothing to be concerned about. Right, Damien? Again, I became more confused. However, I looked up to Damon to see him looking at, uh, looking up at Diana with almost a forced, thankful look. I could tell he was grateful for the assistance, but I could tell he was still angry with her. However, that spell won't last forever. He'll need to maintain it using energy. But I'm sure you can provide that, correct? I was lost, but I understood what she was saying, nodding in acknowledgement. Um, what did you take from Damien? Or don't question it. Wait, I don't understand. I guess what did you take from Damien? I want to know exactly what was going on. The confusion that was going on throughout the day of Damien's well-being was too much to ignore, and I needed to sort it out. It's not for him, then it, for if if not for him, then for my own sanity. Diana gave me a firm look, crossing her arms. A little piece of the demon lord that has been haunting him. Happy? What? <laughs> Diana shook her head and let out a sigh. He can explain if you're that curious. Diana then turned, her, turned on her heel and walked towards the door. Before she left, however, she turned back and looked to Damien. Be careful how much you feed. You've been without energy for too long. You'll be craving soon. Like a vampire. But those haunting... Or, no, like a, a ghoul from Tokyo Ghoul. But those haunting words, Diana finally left the room as Damien laid his head on mine. He was let out a tired sigh as I looked up at him, lost as ever. Just from his expression, I could tell that he was just beyond relieved to be out of whatever torture the mind-reading hand for forced upon him. It was something he never wanted, and yet he had to endure it for the day until Diana blocked his mind. Why she didn't do it before was beyond me, but at least he was okay now. The more I thought about it, the more a part of me began to question the situation. If Damien could block out, of, out his mind-reading, then would it be possible for him to want to be a demon again? As a demon, he had many interesting abilities. And again, it was his decision. From what he had told me about his past, he didn't want to relive any of it with the skin he was born in. I let the inner conflict wane as I cuffed Damon's cheek, feeling him nuzzle into it. Right now, Damon needed some tender loving care, and I needed to provide it. Are you okay? I am now. Alright. 
I could hear the ease drip from his voice, making me smile. He was okay now. I slowly climbed, cl climbed, climbed into bed with him and wrapped my arms around his body, feeling him cuddle into my embrace and let a hum of joy at the feeling. It was cute to see him like this, but then again, he was cute to begin with. Another reason why I loved him. I ran my hand slowly through his hair as I let him settle down from the ordeal he went through. I could tell he was exhausted, just like I was. However, he began to speak, making me awaken enough to pay attention to him. I've been having nightmares, too. You have? I looked down at Damien as he nodded and looked up at me. The dark circles under his eyes were much more prominent the closer I was to him, making me frown a bit at sight. Still, he continued. Some sort of shadow kept visiting me and taunting me for my choices. It would change shape every time, and just now, it only helped in making my mind-reading abilities worse. So we don't even know who the shadow is. Damien... I gave, I gave Damien a small squeeze, making him lean up and kiss my cheek before nuzzling his head into my shoulder, continuing. I didn't want to worry you with it because I thought it was a side effect to becoming human. But I guess it was right. I was always a demon. Aww. I frowned even further and nuzzled his head gently. It's gone now, right? There's nothing you need to worry about anymore. I know. Damien and I held on to each other, both settled into the situation we were under. There was a large step for us, and we had to somehow deal with the most likely, the, with this most likely after we returned to the demon world. Will Damien get used to being a demon once again, or will he demand to try and become a human once more? I couldn't say for sure. The exhaustion that plagued, me, plagued us took over us at last, driving us asleep within each other's arms. I half expected the night to be uneventful, but my thoughts began to plague me, trying to be disassembled all of my fi all of my discoveries and everything that happened to us in my subconsciousness. We were in the demon world, and Damon was back to being a demon, despite the fact he never actually became human in the first place, even though Diana said that she had done it. The dizzying cycle of confusion waved around each thought, making them spin as I tried to organize and dissect them. There's no use in trying, dear. You only become more confused in the end. Excuse me? Diana's voice rang out in the air, causing me to look around in surprise at the dark. Diana? <laughs> Keep telling yourself that, dear. Whatever helps you sleep. Is it Diana's mom? I spun around the space, trying to pin down where her voice was coming from, but saw nothing but the black color of my imageless, imageless dream, creating... My imageless dreams greet me as it did. Still, Diana's voice rang out to me loud and clear, as if she were there watching and speaking to me somewhere nearby. Was this only meant to confuse me more? What do you want? What do you think, dear? I'm here to haunt you and tell you how your life is a complete mess now that Damien is back to being a demon. Oh, wait. He was never human in the first place. Wait, why is she doing this? Why is she doing this? I sneered at the dark, unbelieving what I was hearing. He might as well have been. He didn't have magic or mind reading or anything, so he was close enough. Hmm, something tells me that you're actually happy about the turn of events. No? What? Think about it. Damien with his powers. He's not a boring human. He can enthrall you and use magic. And protect you forever and ever without worrying about human trivialities. No, I didn't think of that. Uh, whenever I think of demons in this game, I assume it's going to be super sucky. Because we're a human, so we're going to eventually die. And they're going to still continue to live forever. I took a moment to myself, taking out what the voice proclaimed in Diana's voice. While it was true that Damien and I accepted his humanity, a part of me was rather excited to see him as a demon again. Maybe it was the nostalgia of meeting him as a demon, or maybe it was because it was a part of him I loved that made me happy. I couldn't tell. At my silence, the voice in the air chuckled deeply. See? There's nothing wrong with a little demon power. What was Damien thinking? At that moment, my mind began to cloud with agreement. What was Damien thinking? Why desire to be human? Humans are weaker than demons, and he could do so many things now that he had a barrier around his mind reading. Well, Damien didn't want to. He didn't want to be a demon because of how his dad treated him, and that demons are not good anyway. 
they just use people for energy. Why is my character not thinking of this stuff? He then had to give up his powers now and everything would be completely okay. The voice disappeared, leaving the thought of Damien engraved in my dreams. He ran through my thought, my mind as the night passed to morning the next day. I woke up to Damien still in my arms while the grogginess of the morning to- Oh, I was about to yawn, but then I wanted to keep talking. <laughs> morning overtook my body and made me feel like I was going back to sleep. Something about Damien in my arms made me keep my eyes open. He seemed at peace, finally having some shut-eye and getting proper rest. I felt a wave of happiness run through me, but at the same time, I couldn't help but remember the voice of my dreams. Damien was a demon. I ran my fingers through Damien's hair, becoming lost in thought once again. Was I being selfish or was I just being positive? Damien seemed to only hate his mind reading and that was taken care of. At the same time, a wave of reality washed over my moral compass. Damien had to be the one to decide. It was, so hi it was his body, and he was the one ultimately living in it. But was it even possible to become human? The question crossed my mind and settled, and settled in as I stared at the far wall. Would Damien even have a choice? Well, if there was no choice in the matter, then Damien was set to live a happier life with his mind reading Billy under a barrier. I just have to give him, give him energy, which didn't seem to be a big deal. As Damien nuzzled, nuzzled my shoulder in his sleep, I looked down at him and smiled. Yeah, it was okay. I rubbed my eyes but stopped as I managed to spot Diana at the doorway, holding two plates of food and leaning against a door frame. The food looked delicious, but the intrusion was out of place. Diana? Diana placed a finger to her lips before walking over and gently placing the food she brought onto the table near the bed. Being careful not to make noise, Damien seemed to cuddle closer, despite obviously smelling the food by the, by the wiggle of his nose. I couldn't help but smile and nod to Diana, combing my fingers through Damien's hair as Diana crossed her arms and watched, lowering her voice to barely above a whisper to speak to me. You seem to be in a good mood. I nodded, looking up at the succubus, and I gently gave Damien a squeeze. Yeah, Damien got some sleep, which is what he needed. I took the moment to look down at Damien's sleeping face, seeing how innocent and peaceful it was. The dark circles under his eyes seemed to have vanished, causing another relaxed wave to rush over me. Have you given him any energy? Nope. <laughs> I shook my head, not remembering at all ever giving him energy. Whether he took energy in our sleep was something I would be unaware of, so I could only assume that he had not taken any from me at all. Diana pressed her lips together before looking to Damien. You'll need to feed him energy soon. Uh, uh, okay, I know. Don't worry, I got this. Diana nodded in reply before turning on her heel and walking to the door. Before she crossed the to cross a threshold, however, she looked back at me over my shoulder, over I'm her shoulder. Curious about something. Yes. Huh? What is it? For a moment, hesitation took over Diana's expression before she could settle, before she settled into her curiosity and asked, "What? What are your thoughts about him being a demon once again?" I stared at Diana, seeing the curiosity burn her eyes, my grip slightly tightened around Damien as I let my thoughts try and construct an answer. At the same time, I wasn't entirely 100% sure myself. Uh, I don't know. I'm happy he's a demon. He wants to be human. Uh, la, 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 la. I know he wants to be human, for sure. At the end of the day, Damien desired to be human above anything else. He made that clear when we met, and I wanted to respect his decision. Hell, I fell in love with him even as he became a human. He and I were closer that way. Diana stared at me for a moment before nodding in, a, in acknowledgement and leaving the room. Closing the door behind her, that was an interesting interaction. Looking down at Damien's sleeping form, he had turned his head in his sleep so I could only see the top of his orange head. I smiled slightly and kissed the top of his head, causing him to stir a bit in my arms. At the end of it all, I wanted what was best for us, and that was something we had to deal with together. Whether or not this ended with him being human or not was up in the air, but for now I had the responsibility of caring for him. I just felt like Damien was listening to us, and he always wanted to be human so it's not our f we we can't have a same like no you're gonna stay as a demon dude no we can't do that damon gently squeezed my form allowing me to take take in that he was awake now and looked up at me with tired eyes mm, good morning no oh, at least he sounds happy here i can't help but smile at his expression he was an early bird but the rare occasion where i caught him more in, in 
more entranced in sleep than me were the moments I found so adorable. Good morning, sleepyhead. Damien blushed a bit before crawling up a bit and kissed me sweetly. I smiled wider against his lips and wrapped my arms around him, melting into the kiss lovingly. And this is where we are going to stop. With our beautiful prince waking up finally, and Diana asking us a weird question, I feel like everything that we're answering is going to lead up to our ending. I don't know what kind of ending we're getting. Uh, I got neutral ending last time, or bad ending, or whatever ending. So hopefully we can do best ending ever. <laughs> if not, I will be doing the same thing as I did in Seduce Me 1. Where I went throughout the whole route and then I came back around to do everyone's good ending that didn't get a good ending. So that's going to be it for today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.